Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. When you draw, full trigger. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Boat Gang. Uh, today we're going to be uh, just working on a Blackjack 42. Okay, we're going to be uh, straightening out this rudder bracket right here. I think in that crash yesterday, she got uh, bent out of shape. So we got to straighten that out. I think I'm going to pull my strut off, buff this bad boy up, kind of sharpen up some edges on this guy uh, for some high speed running, you know. So uh, we're going to set the boat up for the next video, you know. So stick around. Big B with Ironclad RC. So let's get to it, you guys. Let's get to it. Uh, basically, the boat's stock. It's basically stock. Stock electronics, stock servo, receiver, everything. I did add a cat pack on the 160 Farmer there. Uh, man, when I start running this boat, I can't quit. I can't quit. Like I get, like I get addicted to running this boat, and that's basically the reason why you guys hadn't seen this boat in, in such a long time, man. Uh, man, I can, when I get on this thing right here and the Blackjack 24, man, I. I can't quit running them. I can't quit tuning and I can't I can't just put it down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um let me show you what I'm talking about here with my rudder. Alright, you guys see how there's a you know it's tied up here and there's a gap down here. Alright, when I when I flipped the boat the other day, or in that well you guys seen the intro there, I must have landed on my rudder at like like that and it bent my rudder bracket out. Okay. And uh, normally I run a zip tie as my breakaway. Sorry about the camera there. I run my zip tie as a breakaway. You know, it broke off. And we're going to have to straighten this bracket out. So let's go ahead and get it off. You know, I've already had it off. I figured I'd show you guys what it looked like before I fixed it. All right. While we got it off, we'll go ahead and pull the strut. Hopefully you guys will be able to see what I'm, what I'm doing here. I uh, got the rudder off. And let's see if you guys can... Okay, so you can see the square, the square end right here, where it's backed up by the, the bend, and then it's kind of bent in. You guys see that? And then the bottom here, it looks straight. Okay, and then the top is bent in. So I've got my drill vise right here. Um, I was actually thinking about just kind of putting it on these customized plumber's wrench here. I actually took the teeth off of it for a couple projects. Um, I was thinking about putting it on this. Maybe this will work. I don't know. Let's see. Tighten this guy down here. Alright. And maybe, maybe we'll get lucky. We can bend this corner right here out. Let's try this first. Oh, I felt it bend. Let's bend it a little bit more. So that side's straight and this side's kicked out now. You, you got to do stuff like this, you know, especially when you wreck a boat at 75 miles an hour. It, it, it happens. It's not the quality of the material. It's not the quality of the boat. It's just going fast, 75 miles an hour. Stuff like this will happen at speeds like that, you know. Yeah, it happens. metal hammer here maybe I can get more more on it here right, let's see how that looks all right let's go put it on a boat see how it looks yeah don't y'all don't y'all don't laugh at my steel screws I got in this strut bracket I um I extended it and I needed some long screws and all I had at the time was was uh, steel screws I need to get some stainless steel screws because they're rusting oh I think we got it here let's see how it looks when we get it tight oh yeah see there's no gap now all right 
Uh, looks better anyway. So, I don't know if my boat's level, but uh, if your rudder, if your rudder's can't, you know, kicked out at an angle like that, it will actually cause your boat to to veer uh, substantially. You know, veer pretty bad. According to the square right here, um, it's it's right on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. I got it sitting straight down on the table here. All right, so that looks pretty good. I got the cable loosened up in the collet, and check out all the grease. Okay, with this upgraded strut, which I don't recommend this strut because I had to do a lot of modifications to get it to work. I had to actually extend the strut off the transom and thin this strut out like thin it out to fit in this bracket but look at all the grease man I actually didn't even grease it yesterday before my run because it's been keeping grease in there look at that with the stock strut you'd have to grease it i've had to grease the stock strut uh during like while i was at the pond uh, this one, this one right here, this Speedmaster strut keeps grease in. Check it out. Oh man, that's freaking nice to see. Two runs, two runs, four packs on this on this cable. All right, and it's still got plenty of grease. That's amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and pull the stinger or strut. Excuse me. Get this rudder back off, and I'm gonna buff this bad boy up. That salt water does a number on it. I had to uh, actually, like I said, I had to thin out the strut and buff it out. So this, you know, whatever they use to protect the aluminum from pitting, it's no longer on the strut. So I have to actually show it quite a bit, bit of attention. Now, if you take your, if you find a good position on your strut, I recommend marking it. If you guys can see right here, I've marked my strut. You see that line right there? I marked it that's where I found my prime position all right so uh, let's go ahead and get this guy off. Uh, I got the screw out but my struts not wanting to come off the stuffing tube all right so I've got some o-ring pliers when you when you press them it opens them opens the plier so I'm gonna try to pry it off with this because I don't want to bend my stuffing tube there we go it's got it's a nice tight fit right here nice tight fit and fit right there you know um this is the type of strut that um uses the stuffing tube for the the bushing the bearing right there and it spins in the stuffing tube kind of like the stock one but this one right here is actually really tight fitting okay and i let that bearing spin with it all right uh so you see the the you know how it's tarnished from running in that salt water all right so i got the strut over here on the workbench and i got a scrap brass tube here my old brass tube and uh it actually don't have like a, a bad con like transition right here but i want to sharpen up and taper this transition so we don't have any deflection okay when the boat's running we don't want any deflection uh deflecting water from the propeller okay uh this is actually an, uh, a large or extra large speedmaster strut and um the barrel is actually really big it's got a flat bottom and like i said i reprofiled it i actually thinned it out so i could fit it in there but um i actually took off like about four millimeters this way as well that sits up against the boat uh, I'm actually going to take off some more material right here so I can actually get some more up and down or angle adjustability on my strut just make it easier on me and um, we're going to sharpen up this leading edge resharpen it and then we're going to buff it uh, what I what I want to do um, where I've actually taking it down and reprofiled this leading edge uh, there was like a big hump right here it was like a big a big hump you know that went up and then it 
and then it had a sharp edge so I took that hump right there out all right but I didn't really profile it like perfect you guys see like uh like this little little area right there that's raised and we got this dip so I actually want to get rid of that little dip or at least file this down so we have a nice transition so it don't have that dip right there all right so it meets up nice and clean okay and I've been contemplating uh, since it's such a large strut and I'm running smaller propellers like 43 millimeter propellers I've been contemplating on taking maybe a millimeter off both sides of this flat spot here okay and or right here on that angle on that top angle all right uh, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm basically blueprinting my strut okay uh, making it more hydrodynamic less drag less deflection to the propeller so the propeller gets more water I went with a flat bottom strut to actually uh, act as a, a trim tab because I wasn't planning on putting trim tabs on the 42 that's why I blueprinted the boat I was going to use this as my trim tab only all right but um so since I I might I might profile the sides okay and if, if you profile the sides they, there can't be any dips in it it's got to be straight okay if it has a little dip or a high spot it will deflect water from the propeller so if you if you do anything like this you definitely got to take your time and I really don't have a whole lot of time to do that so we may just kind of thin this out sharpen this up buff it up take care and work on that dip right there that's the one i'm really worried about and the nose so i'm gonna fast forward through it i guess you guys can just kind of watch me work on it um there's no real science to it i'm just trying to reduce water deflection make it more hydrodynamic So excuse the mess here, but um, I've been working on it. All right, um, rounding off these edges right here, basically creating a bullet. All right, um, gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. I want to keep these bottom lines right here kind of sharp, but round the uh, leading edge edges to the, and then it'll get sharper toward the back. Uh, the top of it here, I'm actually sanding off that sharp line. Okay, reducing. The overall drag you know increasing the hydrodynamics uh, with this part right here um, sh I sharpened the, the leading edge and I'm actually rounding rounding this trailing edge okay um, I want to reduce that flat area back here uh, just like an airplane you know uh, air or water will go over that you know slice through the water okay and slow down at the high spot here and then if we create another low spot behind almost like a sharp trailing edge okay that should slow down when it hits the brake speed and then speed up 
on the trailing edge right here all right the water will slow down and then it'll actually speed up okay and then it'll hit the propeller uh, you guys see what i'm saying see what i'm talking about i'm actually rounding off okay this is straight i actually sanded up here too i'm actually rounding you know contouring this trailing edge okay so it doesn't slow the water down if anything on that you know it'll it'll speed it up on that back slope okay that's my thoughts could be wrong but i guess we'll find out okay um some of the fastest outboards in the world the lower unit on the outboard shaped like a bullet i mean they've taken off just about every literally every ounce of material they could and just you know encased the gears you know and they've sharpened and contoured those lower units to uh to create as little drag as as physically or scientifically possible you know I got her polished up here okay um i got the leading edge sharp as a freaking razor son oh yeah it's sharp as hell uh, i've got a nice gradual taper from the leading edge to about three quarter center on the on the strut all right and then that taper gradually uh tapers to the lead uh trailing edge here okay uh getting a little tongue tied there all right so you can see the reflection there there's no real low spots all right it's a nice gradual transition to the trailing edge trailing trailing edge is like uh i'm gonna call it a cunt hair thick back here you know uh my hands are dirty sorry you guys just got done buffing it with the barrel itself you guys see me uh i actually put that on the scrap stuffing tube here okay and i was using a sandpaper to get that gradual taper right okay so it's like no blunt edges anywhere nice and nice and uh nice and streamlined nice and hydrodynamic all right so um you know like i said uh outboard motors okay outboard motors they have a small bullet cone before the propeller and if you look at an outboard above the propeller uh, the outboard lower unit is shaped very similar, if not identical, to my my strut right here. Okay, so the water is going to ramp onto this, you know, hit the leading edge, split in half, ramp onto this high spot, and then it's going to, you know, slow down to the high spot, and then it's going to speed up off the high spot. All right, um, so the strut barrel, I've actually reduced the size of all the way around the only thing i didn't touch well I actually touched the bottom too but i was trying to keep the edges sharp on the on the bottom all right and the bullet part of the strut i've elongated the taper probably i would say hell if i had to guess uh the taper the taper actually stopped right in here somewhere you have to go to the beginning of the video check out the what what it looked like before but this taper right here, it actually stopped about right there. So I've actually brought my taper out, let's see, to about right there, all the way around. You guys see that? On the bottom, it was like somewhere in here. Now it's like 
tapered out to that okay and what i'm going to do is uh gradually uh, as i run the boat because i'm gonna have to pull the strut off occasionally to buff it up you know to keep it shiny uh gradually i'll gradually remove material off the sides i actually took quite a bit off of this and this side okay quite a bit I actually took quite a bit off you, well damn it's actually a little bit lopsided well not really all right and i took took material off this side of this flat spot i took material off of this side left this side high okay so she's basically like a bullet okay getting there getting there we're going i'm gonna keep modifying it as i run the boat as i feel necessary you know um but that's what i did to my strut okay it's not the stock strut it's the upgraded large speedmaster strut but hopefully my little uh, my little modification here helps water ramp you know uh meet the propeller uh smoothly you know it's not like disturbed water coming off that blunt blunt edge of the rudder well you could see how thick it was now you can see how thin it is okay look at the difference there you see that dip right here remember how we had that dip now it's a nice sloping cone shape okay see how everything's nice and smooth no no race spots no high spots nice hydrodynamic strut So this is the stock stuffing tube and strut, and this is the upgraded stuffing tube, smaller diameter. All right, you guys see the difference here? This one runs a liner, this one has no liner. All right, big difference. So I got the strut and the rudder back on the boat. Hopefully you guys can see it. Okay, um, I got the stock strut right here, so you guys can see the difference in the upgraded strut and the stock strut all right it's quite a bit larger well the strut the actual strut bar itself is larger the barrel the barrel itself is actually let's see let's clear it out for you 13.8 millimeters on the stock barrel which i've actually reduce the size of the stock barrel as well so it's actually about 14 millimeters the upgraded strut is 11.4 millimeters wide all right so you see the difference there okay uh the height of it's thinner too all right the only thing is that is actually larger about this upgraded strut is the actual strut bar okay the barrel is smaller basically basically that's why i wanted to profile this to a to a taper on the back end if my taper if i feel you know um it, it wasn't it's not performing or i lose top end speed you know i could always file that flat again okay i've got on this upgraded strut i've got plenty of room for modifications in the future you know what i'm saying you gotta figure now you gotta figure that this is a surface piercing propeller okay only one blade is in the water at a time okay the blade goes down it scoops the water thrusts the water thrusting the boat it comes around the top of the propeller is you know while it's in the spin it's unloading you know hence the rooster tail okay and then it goes back around all right if the water off the top of the strut is slower moving than the water under the strut then it could possibly slow the rpm down on your propeller okay uh if you can get the water off the strut and actually you know speed it up on that back taper right there then it will hopefully what i'm thinking in my eyes it will help unload the propeller okay push that water push the propeller push the water off and over the propeller quicker hopefully hopefully achieving a higher rpm you got me so it's in the spin scooping the water it comes up out of the spin the water coming off the strut here if it's faster moving than the water under the strut then it should help unload the propeller 
not slow and propeller down with a slow moving water you know or you could look at it like this you know with the blunt edge okay that's going to actually slow the water down and when it hits that blunt edge it's going to swirl the water you know disturb the water and that could actually help the propeller spin faster with the blunt edge but my eyes my thinking i'm thinking if we can speed the water up off the top of the strut then it could possibly help the propeller achieve a higher rpm that's my thinking you know uh surface pierce and props they're only in the water one blade at a time even a three blade even a four blade okay uh they're, they're right on the surface you can see where the strut's set at it's right in line with the surface running with the surface of the water you know so i got something else to show you guys those of you who are still here a little bonus for you something i may do something i may not do but um i've had a lot of guys you know mention putting like a little front canard like a little winglet up here kind of like the motley crew upgrade front wing or air dam so i cut this piece of plastic right here it's actually really light okay and i'm thinking about it i'm thinking about it all right kind of direct some of that air up and over the boat okay possibly stop as much so much air from getting under the boat so she's not airing out quite as bad at high speed keep the front of the boat down maybe not quite as much angle all right i kind of like the shape of this piece of plastic see how it's got that rolled over edge then it kind of goes down i don't know if that's good or not but it's kind of hollow on the underside um so i actually cut it off this printer this printer lid right here okay you see this side has like it rolls over i can actually sand this you know profile it like a little little wing all right now look at this side oh yeah see that side see how the see how it's rolled over perfect it don't have a dip after the roll see how this one's got that little dip all right so maybe we'll kind of play around with both sides i, I figured this side would be better so i'm going to actually use this piece as my testing piece if i decide to do it you know um and uh use this piece right here for my final final piece so what i'm thinking about doing um maybe maybe put like a block here a block here okay with a pin all right and I it would be cool it would be really cool to make it active you know but uh i at least want to put pins in it and i can do, drill two small holes small enough that i can fill in if it don't work you know and make it so i can actually adjust it on the fly all right so the one the one thing i'm trying to overcome is how to keep it stationary once I put the pins in, how would I actually keep it stationary, but l make it adjustable, you know? Um, so just something I'm tinkering around with. I may, it may not see the light of day or it may, it may, it may just very well <laughs> see the water, you know, but, uh, it's definitely something I'm thinking about doing. I've had a lot of guys request something like this. It'll actually, you know, redirect some of the air up and over the boat and possibly like i said uh reducing the amount of airflow under the boat you know because you see the front of the boat right here it's like a blunt edge all right i think if we put a little winglet right here even if it was like sitting even if even if it was sitting just like just in front of the front of the tunnel okay just in front of it maybe a little bit lower than i got it okay and that would help direct wind over i don't know i don't know i'd like to hear your thoughts you know right in front of the tunnel forward of the tunnel high or low you know or low back all right not quite that much angle we'll have to adjust the angle according to how the boat acts on the water uh but something i'm thinking about all right uh i'll let you guys go now you know so uh, 
a little bonus for you guys. Something to think about anyway. Big B with Ironclad RC. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel.